Just a couple of housekeeping things. If you could go ahead and mute yourselves as you enter and keep yourself muted and your video off throughout the webinar. If you have any questions, you are welcome to raise your hand. You can unmute and shout them out when we pause for questions or go ahead and put them in the chat. I do want to point out that this is a competitive discretionary grant program. So any questions that we do receive will be recording and we'll be posting onto the FAQ document on our website. It's a great resource to note on our website. You can ask questions up until December 13th. You ask them via email and we answer them on that FAQ document that's available to anyone. Okay, as I mentioned, there are two different grant programs that are going on right now. The first is the poll worker program. That's our two year larger in scope and scale program. The second is the service day mini grant program. Right now we're talking about how to apply for the pro worker grant program. And at 3 p.m. we'll jump into how to apply for the service day mini grant program. We already did an overview of both of these last week. If you missed that, you can tune into the recorded version on our website. And if you don't take anything else away from this, I want you to hear that the poll worker program applications are submitted at grants.gov and service day mini grant applications are submitted via email. A little bit about what we're gonna cover in the next hour. We have some resources for you. I do wanna point out that the grants.gov technical information, we're not gonna to get too deep into, but I will point you to the resources to be able to navigate grants.gov. We are gonna pull up our application form and walk through that. And we will talk about the budget worksheet as well as the instructions for that. We'll have lots of time for questions. And then, as I said, at 3 p.m., we will go ahead and transition to the mini grant program. I'm seeing that Susan does not have audio. Can folks give me a thumbs up if they can hear me? Okay. Thank you. All right, Susan, if there's something that we can do to help you, please reach out via the chat. You can also call in using the phone number that's with the Zoom information. Thanks, Sammy. She's going to post the call information in the chat for you. Okay, so I'm going to dive in here. This is just some high level information about this two year what? grant program. Oh, my God, let me go. Wait, bye. Sorry about that. Make sure everybody is muted that needs to be. Again, this is a two year grant period. There is a 10% matching requirement and the award maximum for this one is $100,000 and the minimum is $45,000. I'll mention it a couple of times today, but there is a lot more information and resources on our website as well as on grants.gov. This is some important information about resources for you. This is our application period right at the top. As you know, it opened just recently on November 16th and it closes on Monday, December 18th. It's a pretty short application window. And I hope that as you prepare to submit your applications, you do so early. If you do run into any technical issues submitting your application, you'll need to document that and report it to the EAC as soon as possible prior to the application closing. As I mentioned, Grants.gov has really extensive training available. Uh, you can see the link on the screen there. They have an online walkthrough as well as several videos about how to access applications and submit them using their workspace at grants.gov. You can see under the EAC website there, I've listed a couple of resources. And I just wanna emphasize how important these are to this grant program, especially as you're going into writing your applications. There is resources on SAM.gov as well as grants.gov and how to apply. And the budget worksheet instructions are gonna be really instrumental in helping you develop your budget. 
that application kit has a lot of information about this program and Appendix D is our scoring rubric. Um, and again, the scoring rubric, it covers everything that our reviewers will use as they look at and score each application. So a really helpful tool for you to be familiar with before you go in and start writing your application to make sure you don't miss anything. On the bottom, that opportunity number is how you can locate this program at grants.gov. You can search by that number, or you can just use keyword and search for uh, Help America Vote. Up on the screen right now is our application checklist. A couple there that should be pretty clear that submitted before the deadline and meets el eligibility requirements. We do require an active SAM registration. And those documents at the bottom are kind of what we're going to focus on today. The SF-424, the SFLLL, those are federal forms. The budget worksheet and the HAVCP, those are applications that are specific to this program and the EAC. And then your indirect cost rate agreement, if that's applicable to your organization. I want to point out that the 424 and the LLL are attachments in the application package on grants.gov. I'll show you that in just a moment. And the application and the budget worksheet are submitted using the application package, but you download those pieces from the additional resources tab. And again, we'll take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so grants.gov, this is really just to show you the, the amount of training that they have available. This is kind of where their starting point is. You can see that long link on the screen. They have a lot of information about how to apply for grants on there. On this next page, what we've done is at grants.gov, we went to the search for an opportunity button and you can see in the keyword there, I searched for vote and both of our programs are right there on the screen. Once you click on the opportunity number, you should see something that looks like this. You can see those four tabs, synopsis, version history, related documents, and the package there across the top. I wanna point out the related documents. This is what I just mentioned. This is where you will find our application as well as the budget worksheet for download. And this, when you click on the package, you can view the package details. <clears throat> you can see each of those forms that is also required. The SF-424 and the SFLLL, those can be completed as web forms in Grants.gov or don downloaded and then re-uploaded as completed PDFs. It's important to note that if you either download and upload one as a PDF or complete the web form, if you change your mind and go back and try and do it the other way, it will overwrite what you've already done. So if you start it as a web form, you may want to complete it as a web form. If you start it as a PDF upload, stick with the PDF upload. Um, keep that in mind as other folks might be interacting in there as well, because you can have multiple people from your organization working on the same application. Grants.gov does recommend that you upload or complete the SF-424 first because it will pull some of your information in there and help pre-populate some other areas for you. And you can see there that attachments part of those mandatory forms, that's where you're going to add the budget worksheet and the application form. I'm going to pull up our application so that we can just review it together. Are there any questions before I do that? Okay, we're going to get the application up on the screen. You should be able to see this PDF now. This is what the application form looks like for the poll worker program. You can see up at the top, there's some brief instructions. 
but I do want to note that at the end of this document, there's really in-depth and thorough instructions on how to complete this. And you can see that some areas of the form have an asterisk next to it, and that indicates that there is more detailed information to be referred to at the end of the document. You can see that here next to the project narrative. So starting back up at the top, this is your basic contact information and your certifying official. We will, of course, ask for the amount you've requested, as well as your match amount. Next is your executive summary. We don't have any character or word limits, but I do want you to make sure you read the instructions really clearly. You can see in this one, we've mentioned a brief description. This is your elevator pitch. This is your executive summary. We ask about engaging historically underrepresented groups and that definition, you can find that in the scoring rubric. We do prioritize programs that are engaging those groups, um, all things being equal, we will have priority consideration for any applications that do that. You know, uh, sorry to interrupt, we did have a question in the chat about SAM registration, if you could talk about that a little bit more. Oh, sure. Thanks, Amy. Oh, SAM registration. So the system for award management is um, an online registration system where anyone who's receiving money from the federal government has to be registered and have a unique entity identification number, a UEI. Um, it's really common. Lots of people go through this process, but what I recommend to you is to start it now, do it early, um, and make sure that you do get your UEI, your, your SAM registration completed before you apply. If you have any, any issues with that, if you have your, your SAM registration submitted, um, but you haven't heard back from them yet, please document that for us and provide that documentation with your application, provide a justification for that. Is the match required cash or can it be in-kind? We will accept either. Okay, great, good questions. Okay, this is our the Poll Worker Project narrative, and I'm sure you're familiar with narratives in a grant application, but again, this is the meat of your application. This is where you're gonna tell your story to us about your program, what the problem is in your community that you're gonna solve, how you're gonna solve it, and what you expect the results to be. I hope that, um, you know, as you go into writing your application, you really think about that from the beginning is what are we offering for our community? How is this grant program going to help us do that? And, and then you can start to flesh out your narrative and tie in all the pieces, including your budget and your executive summary and your performance measures. And again, there's more information on this piece in those instructions at the end um, and lots of information in all those resources I pointed out at the beginning. All right, our performance measures, they are required for this grant program and you will have to report on them semi-annually. We have one required performance measure, that's this one up here, total number, number of college student participants served. And the other two, you can select from some options that we've included. They are included down below in the instructions of this document. And I did, I input a sample here so you could see what it looks like after you complete this section. This number and the title, you just copy and paste right out of those provided performance measures and in your estimated target, the number that you hope to achieve. And make sure that you're reading these performance measures carefully. This one, is workshops, presentations, trainings. Um, but you can see here, there's a little more information down in the instructions. We're not looking for the number of workshops for this one, it's the number of students served, the number of participants that you have. And then in our narrative here, up in this section, we include what we'd like for you to provide in the narrative. 
that's going to be your tracking mechanisms and your timelines and how you're going to do this. I put so, an example narrative in this box. It's really hitting those couple of pieces is how we're going to track this and what is our timeline and how are we going to achieve this goal. I will tell you, we have a, a fillable PDF as well as a Word document, and you can use whichever one is comfortable for you and your organization for this application form. Okay, up next is our budget narrative. Um, and the, the program narrative tells us the story of your program and how you're going to achieve the goals that you have outlined and the budget narrative should really marry with that information, but add some really concrete numbers to that. So what I like to see in a budget narrative is the cost that you have outlined and anticipated, how you got to that number and how it relates to what you say you're gonna achieve in your narrative and in your performance measures. So make sure that everything makes sense from the beginning to the end. If you don't have any expenses in these categories, you can see we have a box for each category. Please put an NA or none in there just so we know that it's intentionally left blank. All right, this section is the financial management. Um, <clears throat> if you don't know the answers to these, please speak with your financial representative, the person who does your bookkeeping typically. And um, it's important because it's how we will measure risk, risk um, for these awards. That's the end of the application. As I mentioned, there's a lot of guidance here at the end. So make sure that you actually start with your dessert first and go to the end of this document and read through all this beautiful guidance before you go ahead in and start your application. I'll try not to scroll too fast, make anybody ill. You can see here is um, a glimpse at that scoring rubric that I mentioned. This is another um, part of that without the scores in it, but it does cover all of those bullets that we'll be looking for. Here are the performance measures. There's that required one and the other options down below. And some information on that budget narrative. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to jump over to our budget worksheet instructions. When you download your budget worksheet out of grants.gov or our website, it will be an Excel spreadsheet and it does do some calculations in there for you. But I'm looking right now at the, the budget worksheet instructions and there's a lot of detailed information in here. So I'm not gonna get too in depth. Um, I'll leave that to you all as you go through and review these. But I wanna point out that your the total budget in your worksheet should include your match as well as the federal funds that you've requested. And we do separate out if you are requesting funds for service days. Um, just keep in mind that requesting any money for service days does not increase your budget past that $100,000 cap. There was a question about match. There'll be some more guidance on match in here as well as how to determine your match amount. We cover each of the grant categories. And really, I want you to just be aware of what information you're putting into your budget worksheet. Make sure that it aligns with your budget narrative in your application. If your numbers are significantly different or just not making any sense between those two documents, that's a pretty big red flag as we're reading through your application. Okay, we're gonna jump back into the PowerPoint.
And this is a screenshot of part of that budget worksheet that I was just speaking about. And we're not going to get into much more detail about the budget at this time, but if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or go ahead and raise your hand or ask them out loud. I'll pause for a moment. We did have a question in the chat about having a vote by mail process. Um, Stacy, I believe that you did email us this question and we are reviewing it at this time. It's a really good question. Um, and yeah, we're gonna have to talk about that one. And um, she's asking, you know, if they don't have polling places that are staffed by poll workers, our activity is eligible under this program. So I see your question and we will get an answer to you. Lori asks, how do we get a copy of this recording after the training? Lori, the recording will be posted on our website. If you go to eac.gov and then to the grants menu, you can hover and there will be a link there to the college poll worker program. The training is on that page and there'll be a link to the recording there. As soon as possible, uh, we will get it posted for you. Who does the match need to come from? Could I ask for a little bit more information about that question? I wanna make sure I'm answering the, the right question. So tell me um, a little bit more about what you're asking with that one. So, so for for example, if you apply for the hundred thousand, of course you need a ten thousand match. So, does that need to be through donations from the community? Could it be from an institution? Is there any stipulations on who needs to match it? Oh, sure. Um, usually, the the match dollars um, are provided as a combination of those things. The one thing to look out for is that it not be federal funds. A general rule of thumb is that we don't combine any federal grants together. So you don't wanna match our federal grant with a different federal grant program. But in terms of um, individual donations or um, a different funding source, or as someone mentioned, in-kind donations, all of those things would be acceptable forms of match. And how how much like after you award the grant, how much time do you have to get that ten percent match, or do you need yeah. to have it before you apply? Sure, great question. We would like to have your match documented in your budget. You should pretty clearly be able to tell us this is how much our match is, and this is how we're going to achieve it. You'll need to demonstrate the match, so actually um, expend those funds by the end of the two year grant program. And the minimum and maximum award period is over the two years. When will the awards be announced? The timeline for the first day of action is tight. It is so tight, uh, Jennifer. We are hoping to announce the awards in February. And we understand that that makes it pretty difficult if you're planning an event for Help America Vote Day in January. Um, we have opened up the opportunity to allow for pre-award costs that you incurred after November 16th, the date the opportunity opened, and up until the um, award period starts. So if you're awarded and you have completed or um provided activities towards Help America Vote Day, you will be able to be reimbursed for those expenses as long as they were after November 16th. What other questions do you folks have? This is the end of the formal part of this presentation. We covered the pieces. Um, the big things that I want you to take away are, again, this program 
you are applying through grants.gov. You will use the online forms or PDFs in the application package. The, there you'll find the SF-424 and the SFLLL, as well as the attachments availability. In the additional resources, you'll download our application form and the budget worksheet, and then those will be uploaded in the package through the attachments form. Another question is in the applicant toolkit, it mentioned applicants can propose additional performance measures. Is this recommended or should these measures be approved before applying? They don't need to be approved before applying. If there's a measure that better suits your program, you can put it into the application form and just provide a little bit of narrative. This is a measure that better suits our program and here's why. Thanks, Heather. Kelly asks, can an LLC apply as a small business category? I might need a little bit more information on that, Kelly. Could you email us the type of business um, to the havcp at eac.gov email and we can get a, an answer to you. And I will put that email in the chat. Thanks, Amy. Uh, these are great questions. Keep them coming if you have them. Again, all of our resources are on our website. Make sure that you visit there before you start your application. And I want to mention that there are office hours on December 14th from 2 to 3 p.m. There will not be well, there will not be a formal presentation, but Sammy and I will be available to answer questions as you have them. And that QA period for questions on our website ends on December 13th. So the office hours is a great resource if you're, especially if you're having any trouble applying, um, I would encourage you to join us that day. Last call for questions. All right, folks, I will stay here for another few minutes in case there's some final burning questions from folks. Feel free to ask those. Otherwise, um, in about five minutes, we're going to send anyone who's still here back into the waiting room, and then we will reopen the meeting at three o'clock to go, go over our mini grant program and how to apply for that one. Thanks, everybody. I have a question. So, and I'm sure you'll probably go over this in the next training. So if I need to wait, that's fine. What's the difference between the two? Because I know one is for poll workers. Is the other one just to uh, build capacity for existing programming? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I will answer your question briefly right now, but I also want to refer you to our website. We did record an overview webinar of the two different programs. So lots of information on there. So I recommend you checking that out. Basically the program we talked about just now is our two year poll worker program about um, recruiting college students and training them to become poll workers and engage in their community. The service state mini grant program is definitely smaller in scope and scale as well as in the amount of funding. So these are smaller mini grants intended to empower organizations to host service days on Help America Vote Day and National um, Poll Worker Registration Day. Um, 
and those are occurring in 2024. We have the dates for those two programs. So it's more of a an event-based smaller grant program as opposed to this two-year larger poll worker recruitment program. Perfect. Thank you so much. Sure. Last question. You said the next training is at 3 or 3.30. The office hours are from 2 to 3 p.m. on December 14th. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the, the mini grant um, webinar will start at 3 p.m. today. Just thank you, Sammy. I don't know how that escapes my brain so quickly. <laughs> thank you. Of course. All right, folks, we are going to end this training here. You can always send us a question to the HEVCP email address. We will answer that in the FAQs on our website. Anyone who's still in the meeting, we're going to send back into the waiting room and we'll get ready for, as Sammy mentioned, the mini grant how to apply training, which will start right here at 3 p.m.